The fire is an integral part of my life. I'm grateful that I get to go to the grounds and I get to be where the fire is. But, you know, I'm, I live in California, so I want to keep that memory alive. So many times what I find Cherokee people get away from where there's that opportunity, then they forget that they're Cherokee. And, and my father never wanted me to forget who I was. So he kind of ingrained that in us. So the fire is part of my life. It's, a, it's a pretty much a daily thing that I get up in the morning and I, I start a fire and, and I spend the time alone so I can hear and think and listen. That's my morning, offering smoke for people and for things that are revealed to me while I'm there at the fire. I am Charles Twist. I teach at a men's home. We're dealing with people that would either be in that home or prison uh, because of drug or alcohol abuse and so uh, we're mentoring them that they have, there's a different way to live life than what they've lived. And they're people that have either been thrown away or they've thrown themselves away. And so when somebody cares about them and somebody's consistent, then they can find value. And then I, I get to give them that just by being something for them at that moment in time. It's a purpose that I feel comfortable with. I use Cherokee stories to tell them things that and I, I teach kind of out of that story element so that they have to make a conclusion. One of them is, uh, is the story of Ukon, the shining one, and the warrior that he was in battle with, and the promise that was made. There's, a, there's an angel called Ukon, who's the, in Cherokee that means shining, bright. And then there was another one, there was another man, and they're struggling back and forth. And so up walks Let's say you walk up. And so as the struggle's going on, Ukon cries out and he says, you know, if you'll help me, I'll give you wealth, I'll give you position, and I'll give you things that'll benefit you. The other warrior, he cries out, he says, if you will help me, I'll give you medicine. And if I give you medicine, I'll give you knowledge. I'll give you something that you can give to somebody else. I'll give you something that will help you forever. And so there's always that choice. See? We, we're, we're always at a place of choosing. Some things are now. So we have to choose between life like that a lot of times. There's, there's something that can help us forever. And through that help, we get to help everybody. That's medicine. And when you use medicine, we get to help a lot of people. If we just use something temporary, it'll go away. So the man made a good choice and he killed the shining one. So medicine came into the Cherokee hands and I'm, I'm grateful for that man. He gave me hope today. My father was from Locust Grove, Oklahoma. He's actually born in Salisaw and that's where his roots came from. We moved away from Oklahoma as a family in, in 42. His father told him, What's going on on Locust Grove is not much. And he said that, you know, if you would go to the West, then that you would have opportunities that you'll never have here. My dad found a job, found a future for me and my brothers. Out of that, we just set our roots down and we stayed here. And so we had Cherokee ways wherever we were. So when we lived in Bakersfield, we brought those ways down here and we, pr we practiced and talked about those things. We went to Stomps when we went to Oklahoma said so we learned ceremonial ways of doing things, that, but it was short term for us as children. But he retained all of that and he spoke to us about those things, taught us the things I believe that we needed to know. And mainly, he taught us about Cherokee community. In our upbringing, community was the key issue. Uh, we, ha we have to be able to, if we're gonna be Cherokee, we have to have a community. We, we have to honor that community, take care of that community, help that community grow. I think that's motivated me to help begin a community here in Bakersfield. There's a lot of Cherokees here. In Bakersfield, during the uh, Depression era, there was a time uh, I've been told that approximately 15 or 20,000 Cherokee people left Oklahoma within a two, three week span of time. The bulk of those people came to Kern County. 
Some of them went to Los Angeles and some went north into the Sacramento area, but the bulk of those people came here. And in the early days when they had uh, picnics here, it was not uncommon to have five, 6,000 Cherokee people come to a picnic. But to be in Bakersfield, it was just, it was the right place to be because there was this, we have this, we have work opportunity, and we have each other. Since we started the satellite community here, at least three times a year, we have somebody from Tahlequah here uh, to bring cultural issues up. And, and maybe it's, we've had baskets, we've made pottery, so we could actually connect that community. And I think that's what keeps me here is the desire to make that connection greater than it is. Yeah, I come to water because that's what Cherokee people do. If we use our Cherokee ways, it'll cause a lot of people to flourish and make our community stronger.